All right. So today, November 13th, we are going to talk about unlisted sale forms. So there's been a lot of situations where maybe we are um, looking at an expired listing or we represent somebody who found a buyer for their house or maybe a buyer who wants to buy off market. So today we're going to talk about the forms needed to write up an off market sale and um, those forms are P1, which is the, of course, form for everything, the agency law pamphlet. Um, we're going to talk about the unlisted sale input sheet that's required after the close of all off-market sales. And then we'll be talking about buyer's agency and seller representations. So how do you get paid? First of all, we are all aware that we get paid when a listing is um when a listing is published in the Northwest MLS, right? Because there's an offer of compensation to any cooperating broker. And what happens if there's not? Um, so step one that we're going to be talking about is what to do, knowing who you represent and what it means. And then step two, knowing the proper paperwork and how to draft it so your representation shows and you make sure you get paid. First of all, um, we need to make sure that we are referring back to the agency law. So this I'm going to talk about in greater detail next week, but just understanding who you actually represent in a transaction. Um, right now, the agency law gives us guidelines for who we, re who we represent, what our duties to that person are. And as of right now, until January, there is an implied representation that if you don't have anything in place, then you represent a buyer. So keeping that in mind, if you find a seller who has a buyer already, you technically, unless you write up a contract, don't represent that seller. In 2024, January, um, this agency relationship is no longer going to be assumed. We're going to be required to actually just have that relationship in place. So keeping that in mind, you will need to either have a contract with a buyer or with a seller. So sellers, how do you represent a seller? Our agency law states all agents represent the buyer unless we have an agreement to represent a seller. So how do we get this agreement? Um, we need to create that agency relationship because it is not already created. So a seller representation agreement is form 47. I pulled it up right here so you can see. It looks really, really similar to a listing agreement. But there is no offer of compensation for a cooperating broker. So I'll go through kind of the line by lines of this. But when you have a seller who has already identified a buyer and does not want to put their home on the market, you're going to reach for form 47. Okay, this form 47 is for completely off market sales. So there is zero publishing to the Northwest MLS. You are not going to use this form to put it on and then immediately mark it pending. That is a complete violation of what this form is for. No publishing to the Northwest MLS. There is no marketing allowed. And this form is not a listing agreement. It's an agreement to represent the seller in the contract. So the first part you need is the basics of the home being sold. We are going to use this portion to identify the seller who has a buyer already. You should not be the one actively seeking the buyer if you're using this form. Um, if the seller wants to list their home, you can cancel this form and you can use a standard listing agreement form 1A. Uh, when you fill this out, fill it out as if you are taking a listing, find out most of the information you possibly can. And you also want to make sure you order a legal description from title. Okay, the buyer, the buyer's already been identified. This just means you are not going to actively seek that seller's buyer. You're going to have that seller bring you the buyer they have already found. Um, you can make multiple contracts for this if they have several different buyers. Um, 
be really, really careful though, doing this because you don't want to be seen as having a pocket listing because it's not legal. Um, so just keep that in mind. When you create your agency relationship, you're, that's what paragraph two is. You are stating very clearly the relationship you have with the seller. You are getting the permission to write up the contract. Okay, compensation. This is the compensation that you are going to get representing the seller. There is no compensation due for somebody who represents a buyer. Um, again, this is only seller representation. You can be thinking of this like off market for sale by owner. Maybe if you want to represent the seller, um, you have a friend who says, I want to sell my house to this guy down the street. Great. I'll write it up for you. Here you go. Um, we are not going to be putting it into the Northwest MLS. However, at the close of the sale, what we are going to do is we're going to report the sale. So we're going to just put some basic information in there. And this paragraph just says that we have the right to do so. We'll take one. I mean, it could be a cell phone picture if it's an off-market sale. Um, but what this does is it allows us to find the data for this purchase. Uh, we are not going to market whatsoever. So there will be no open houses, nothing. It will not go on the MLS. Like I said, it will not go on and come back off. Make sure that there is zero marketing, but also in this, we do need to advise our sellers that by not putting it on the market, they are not getting the full exposure that they possibly could. And just kind of give them, you know, technically we want to give this to them in writing. This is kind of that in writing. We want to let them know that this is not the ideal way to market their home and that they could potentially be getting a lesser offer by taking away the opportunity to market. As both other contracts, we are just also um, paragraph six and paragraph seven. Um, we are going to... Um, the seller is going to keep the property, uh, represent the property as truthfully as possible. Um, it holds harmless agents as all the other contracts do, just like the listing agreement. Um, and then, of course, the short sale and the distressed home conveyance, that is the same in all of our other listing agreements. We have rarely come into a situation where we truly have a distressed home. Um, but, you know, if for some reason we do, there is a paragraph that does kind of cover those bases for our clients. You should still, like I said, order a title report, have a legal description, because in order to have a binding mutual contract, you do need to have that legal. So if you can get it ordered as soon as possible, make sure that's attached. Um, for sale by owner sales are not exempt from the Seller Disclosure Act. So the form 17 is required, even if these sales are done off market. All right. So now that you got that seller representation, what happens next? Um, let's write up the contract. So we'll look at how that looks. I'm just assuming at this point, it's a standard, you know, residential listing. Um, this is kind of similar if whether you're doing condo, you know, um, land. So just kind of take this with a grain of salt and know that it is kind of across the board what you want to do. We want to make sure that our our MLS number is just either left blank or written in as unlisted. We want to make sure that we have a legal description. So we have a binding contract. The rest of the contract can be filled out just as normal. Now, we don't have in this situation any buyer broker compensation because if you remember back, we only have that seller representation, meaning that seller is only going to be offering compensation to their listing broker. So the big red X is supposed to be over listing broker. <laughs> it's not Xing out the line below, but on line 17, the offer of compensation for the buy side is 0%. Down below, if you represent the seller only, you do not want to fill in any information under the buyer's name. I know it might seem tempting to, to just disclose who you are. Let's keep that on the right-hand side because this helps us differentiate um, 
who is represented by whom. All right, so for the buyers in your contract, um, we can't just completely ignore them. We do need to also give them the service of delivering them the law of agency to disclose also our relationship with that seller. So you can add a form 42 and give it to that buyer in your contract where you just represent the seller. Um, we need to make sure that we are at the very least tracking, giving that agency law pamphlet and um, just making it very clear who we actually represent. So if you do represent the buyer and you're just delivering to the seller this notice, um, you can put that you represent the seller, but you're still delivering them a copy of the agency law pamphlet. Also, this is not a necessary form to do what we're trying to do here because technically the purpose of this form is to establish that relationship when it doesn't disclose it anywhere else. Um, so typically you'd use this with like a, maybe a builder's addendum or um, something that's not written up on our standard forms. So if you don't use this because it does say on form 21 what the representation is, you can leave this form out, but make sure that you're still somehow delivering or proving the delivery of the agency law pamphlet and stating to that buyer broker who you actually represent. All right, so let's look at buyers. You know how to represent a seller now. How do we represent a buyer? Um, for sale by owner sales are not listed in the Northwest MLS, so they don't have an advertised compensation for a buyer broker to receive. So how can you write up a purchase and sale to represent a buyer and get paid? Uh, the first thing I want everybody to kind of go to is you need a buyer representation agreement. And why? Because this is what gives us the right to negotiate our compensation, whether it's offered or not in the listing. <clears throat> As of January 2024, we will not get paid if we don't have a buyer's agency agreement. It'll be required to be in the file with no exceptions. And this is a Department of Licensing requirement. Um, but if you think back to the purpose of doing this, it's because we aren't any longer implying a relationship. We actually have to have something written for either side. And later in the month of December, we'll go through how to actually get buyer's agency agreements signed. Um, and then what does and does not count as being a reasonable time to have the paperwork done. I pulled up the buyer's agency agreement. It is going to be change in January. So this is just a, a preliminary more or less to get this idea. Do the practice now with this one. And on January, we're going to actually go over all of the changes and how to present that to our clients. So as we know before, to get the buyer's agency agreement, we're going to need to state down here in, in line five for compensation that we are to be paid compensation in order to negotiate a compensation, you need to have a buyer requirement that they have to pay. Um, it's, you don't have a right to do so unless you've already obligated your buyer to do so. And then you can sit in this area of negotiable, you know, a negotiable um, space where you're just negotiating one of the obligations from your buyer. Um, so please just make sure if you're representing a buyer and a for sale by owner, you have to have one of these to move forward. Also, when representing a buyer, you'd fill out the whole form as before. And then you're going to make sure that your information is only under the buyer side. Um, I want to go back to compensation right down here, line 17. Now, if this is a for sale by owner, you are still unlisted. There is still no offer of compensation by that seller because it would be unlisted. So you're going to check the box other 
And you're going to add a form 41C asking that seller to go ahead and pay that compensation to you. At the end of the sale, all the sales need to be reported to the Northwest MLS. They keep data on all of the closings. Um, they will record all off-market and on-market sales. Um, this needs to be done. And there are several required boxes, far less than what's actually on a standard listing agreement as far as the requirements. Um, do your best to fill out as many as possible. Um, with this data, they keep it for our statistics and it just helps us whenever we do more price comparisons, it helps with appraisals. So um, if you can, remember these are actually required at the end of the sale to be recorded with the Northwest MLS. And that's a one ULS, the one unlisted listing input sheet. So I have a few scenarios to kind of think about. Um, number one, is it necessary to have a buyer's agency agreement if you're writing up a, a for sale by owner when the agent and the seller have signed a seller representation? It's not required. The buyer can remain unrepresented. Okay, so the buyer in a for sale by owner where you represent seller the buyer does not have to have representation. So the agent should just think about what that means to be a dual agent. And if you are going to be a dual agent, remember what the requirement is to be that. Um, if you have come to a situation where you've identified a buyer that you've been working with and your seller wants to sell off market, um, you may want to just consider listing it with the Northwest MLS and then selling it to this identified buyer to be um, to avoid being accused of having a pocket listing. Okay, can Form 21 be filled out as the representation without additional documents? So in other words, can I go in and check the boxes and put my name down where it belongs without having a seller representation or a buyer representation. When you're working with for sale by owners, the answer is no. It's different with on published Northwest MLS listings, but off market listings is the subject of the day. So for this reason, it is no. You have to have an agency relationship in place in order to disclose, and you have to be able to disclose it on the purchase and sale agreement. Um, disclosing it is not the same as the agreement between the parties to uphold their duties of that relationship. So it's not enough for me to say, okay, I represent seller, I'm going to check the box. I actually have to have my representation agreement so we have a true agency relationship. What if the seller wants to sell his property off market, but they also want to list it and then make it pending immediately? Can they do this? They can, but they cannot do it with the Form 47. If they want to do this and they want it to show up on the MLS as live and then put it straight to pending, they have to fill out the, con the 1A. It is not considered a seller representation. It is just a plain old listing agreement. All right. So um, if you guys have any questions about seller representations, buyer representations, um, agency relationships, or if there's an odd situation that's come up, please feel free to ask it. Um, coming up later in the month of December, we'll go over buyer agency agreements um, and we will talk about how to sell our value. Um, so I hope all of this is valuable. Next week, I'll be talk going into detail about what constitutes an actual agency relationship as well. So thank you for listening and I'm here for questions.